When she's not working as a dentist, Dr. Britt Baker is one of the faces of AEW Wrestling. I'm Robin Lundberg, and Britt Baker joins me now. And Britt, you know, AEW All in London, tremendous pre-sale. I think over 42,000 tickets. This, this is shaping up to be the biggest event in AEW history. So what, what do you make of that news and the prospects of, of walking out at Wembley Stadium? This is one of the most special moments in my entire career. And I, I've been with AEW since day one. I was the first female signed. I was a part of the first All In. That was essentially the precursor to this entire company. It was just an independent wrestling show with no real funding. And now here we are. We on the pre-sale sold 43,000. You said 42, I think it's 43, but that's okay. We won't hold it against you. But um, it, it's so surreal to think of how massive this company is growing and, and how our fan base they are so passionate about all elite wrestling and they want us to grow just as much as we do. And if you would have told me when I, when I put the pen to paper on my, my contract originally that we were going to be doing a show at Wembley in the UK and have this large arena filled with fans that are just diehard AW fans. I don't know that I would have believed you now. I don't think there's anything that we can't do. I think we can take on the entire world. Well, you know, AEW All In in London is also a return to the UK for Soraya, who you've had some issues with for a while, down to her tweeting out the, the photo of your, your black eye, which is almost healed now, it looks like. And you put it out online and you put it on a shirt. There was some reaction to that. You know, and if I'm being fully transparent, myself included, with, with it out of context, were you surprised by the reaction to the shirt? Very. I was very surprised. Um, so... When it started, when I actually posted the picture of my black eye just on social media, it got almost 100,000 likes that I'm tough and I'm a badass and, and wow, this, this, this girl, she's strong and, and it was empowering. But then when it went on a shirt, it was, it was really problematic. And that was so confusing to me because why? Why, if, if I'm on a shirt with a black eye, what's, why does that make me weak? Why does that make me a victim? But if, if a man or Chris Jericho had a black eye, they'd be tough and they'd be a badass. And to me, it's showing the the internal narrative that people are saying about women. And that's that we're not as strong or as tough as the men. And that's the real problem here. It's not a black eye on a t-shirt because that's, that's part of my career. That's what I signed up for. Sometimes I do get hurt. I've broken my leg, my wrist, my nose. And guess what? Now I have a black eye and I signed up for that. That is just as much a part of professional wrestling as me sitting in the makeup chair for two hours and putting on my wrestling gear and trying to look as good as I can for all the fans on live TV. Sometimes you don't wear makeup and you have a black eye and that's just as much a part of it. And I've actually been telling the makeup artists, don't cover up my black eye because I think it's empowering because I'm tough. You should see the other girl. Well, you know, the shirt could say pro wrestling is real on it, right? I mean, so obviously you're standing by it. Do you have a message for any of the critics? I, it's not a message. It's just a question. What, why is a, is a female on a shirt with a black eye? Why do you automatically assume the negativity? Why, why do you automatically assume that something happened to her? That she's a, that she is what you exactly what you said that she is a victim. Why, why do we automatically turn to that narrative? I'm a, I'm a professional wrestler. There are countless of goofy professional wrestling shirts that have no titles, no labels, no context, and, and people buy them and they sell, they sell out. I had a wrestling shirt with my face covered in blood from a hardcore match, and it was the top seller, and, and people wear it. It's, it's, if you look, watch an AEW show, you see my bloody face on a shirt all throughout the crowd. But for whatever reason, this black guy is, is a problem. Well, I, I do respect you standing by it, and, and I, I certainly would not question your toughness. Now, you, you've clearly had many run-ins with the outcasts. Are, are we going to see you get a chance at retribution at, at uh, AEW Double or Nothing? I sure hope so. I can't imagine there being a women's segment at the pay-per-view without some of us getting involved because this this feud is getting pretty uh, pretty ugly. Yeah, I mean, like, as you see, I got the black eye. We don't like each other. That's as real as it gets. That group of outcasts think that they are better than any of us original AEW that are, are that they because they started their career elsewhere. And we are we are from the very start, AEW from from start to finish. That's where our careers are. That doesn't make me less than someone that wrestled at WWE. I'm just as much of a star and probably a better wrestler than any of the outcasts. And I stand by that. So it's insulting to me. I wave the AEW flag, the loud and proud i'm always on the front line fighting for this company i stand very strongly by everything that we we stand for what what tony khan stands for 
and AEW has changed professional wrestling. It really has. So don't come in here. Don't insult my company. Don't insult my brand. Don't insult me. You you, you just re- referenced obviously the outcast, but uh, you know a, a lot of good women's wrestlers in, in the world, uh, it, WWE included, Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and forgetting that, you you seem to not want to draw any delineation between men and women. Where would you size yourself up amongst professional wrestlers? Period. I, I think I'm definitely one of the biggest stars in all of women's wrestling. I think that's pretty undeniable. Um, you you can't think of AEW All Elite Wrestling without attaching the name Dr. Britt Baker to it or the three letters DMD to it. And that's me. I've been a part of the foundation from the ground up of this company. Whether you like me or hate me, you can't deny that. This this company has my name all over the history books. And as far as the, the Soraya tie-in I just mentioned, are you trying to ruin her homecoming? Is, is that what you want to see? At uh, all in London, I don't want to ruin anything. But you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Who who started this fight? Who picked this fight? Uh, another great moment was the return of your boyfriend Adam Cole. You've been right alongside him during you know what I, I think has to be easily the roughest part of his career. What did it mean to you to see him get that reaction? That was such a surreal moment because for a long time we weren't sure that he would ever get to wrestle again, that he would ever have a moment like that ever again, and that everything that he's worked for his entire life would he ever get to to feel that again? Would he ever get to step in the ring again? So when it was it was first and foremost a huge sigh of relief, but I was just so proud of him to see him back in the ring because no one will ever know how hard he worked to get back to this, um, the, like physical therapy, brain therapy, you know, men, mental health issues, physical health issues. He worked so hard and overcame everything. And I, I feel bad for the rest of the division because he's going to come for everything and every everyone because this is what he deserves. He deserves to be at the top of the mountain. Yeah, obviously, you know better than anyone firsthand how tough it is to be in the ring. Or is there any part of you that's worried for him? You're you're always worried because professional wrestling is is dangerous. It's not fun and games. It really it's it's sports entertainment as much as it is combat sport. It's it's Game of Thrones as much as it is UFC. It's storytelling mixed with with fighting. So you're always nervous. And pro- professional wrestling sometimes is inches away from being a career ending and a life threatening injury. That's always that's always in the back of your mind when you're watching someone you care about and that's never going to go away. That's been professional wrestling since the day it started. And it's never going to not be that that's what you sign up for, but you can't, you can't think like that. If you always think what could go wrong, then that would be a pretty miserable, pretty miserable way to look at something you you love so much and what you love to do. One more thing I wanted to ask you when, when CM Punk joined AEW, he was extremely complimentary of you and, and your career saying he was looking forward to working alongside you. Uh, do you hope and do you think that we'll see him on the roster again? I hope whatever is is best for business and whatever is good for everyone's mental, physical, emotional health, that's what I want. I just want everybody to be happy. I want to have AEW be the big, biggest success it could possibly be. I want all the wrestlers to be successful as they possibly could be. So whatever that means, however it plays out, that's what I want. You can catch Dr. Britt Baker weekly on AEW Dynamite and Rampage. Britt, really appreciate the time. And and by the way, the dentist thing. How many people have asked you about that? Balancing the, the dental aspect and, and being, you know, a pro wrestler. Uh, every day. I get asked it every day. But it's okay because it's that's what sets me apart. That's a huge part of my career and a huge part of my success story. So I'm, I'm very proud and I'm happy to answer it every day. I appreciate you taking the time and congratulations on the success. Thank you.